Hi, I'm Anna Conley, junior class president. This week, the transcript talks to the NHS girls soccer team, explores the meaning of the murals around the school, and Nell Sanders goes downtown to hear what the community thinks about the upcoming ballot question on charter schools. For the feature story this week, the transcript invited NHS teachers to go downstairs to NCTV and try out the virtual reality games. Y'all ready for this? Hello and welcome to week five of Hamped Up. This week we are featuring girls soccer. I'm here with Olivia and Sydney and we're here to talk about the girls soccer team. So the first question, obviously injuries have been a big part of this season, especially with the injury to Sydney White. So what was that game like when she went out with the injury and you didn't really have a backup goalie? Everybody was just in total shock. The entire stadium was silent. And um, <laughs> I was just kind of laying there and we're all like, okay, give her some space. And then everybody came over and it was like a 15 minute thing. Um, and we all came here like, oh my gosh. We don't have a goalkeeper because usually our games with, are with JV, and so Sid is like right next door, and yeah. she can come play. And then someone's like, "Okay, call Sid. Call the other Sid. Call the other Sid." And so someone from the stand, someone's dad, called Sid. She drove at that moment all the way from her game at JFK. Go 80 miles per hour. <laughs> 80 miles per hour just to be with us. So what was that like for you when you got that call and like, "Hey, come play with us"? <laughs> it was. It was not how I pictured to get called up to varsity because I loved Sid. I was like just my mentor. So this team kind of had a big culture change this offseason. You have a new coach. So what has that been like for your team? Vanessa came in and she was like, "I'm not going to take any of your guys' crap. If you do anything, you know, I'm going to be right there with you." I played on a high school team myself, um, and she played D1 soccer, and so she really understands the game. All right. So you guys have had a tough stretch, especially since Sydney's injury. But you have the next five games at home, uh, only six games left in the regular season, so what are you guys planning on doing to turn the season around? We want the championship. We gotta earn that championship, and that's how we earn it, by practicing, by the mm -hmm. And we want to win, and especially, you know, there's only three seniors on our team this year, and um, without that kind of, I mean, obviously the juniors care a lot too, but when you're a senior, you like, you want to win. You want your last season to be really good. And there's only three of us. And so that drive, you know, it's all of us want to be lead every single um, practice and say, okay, come on, like we want to get hyped up. We want to say, okay, we're going to play 100% just like we play in a game. All right, well, thank you guys so much for being here. Good luck the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. In other sports news, the boys' soccer team currently sits in second place in their league. Both the boys' and girls' cross-country teams are still undefeated. The field hockey team is in first place in their league. The golf team is in last place. And finally, the football team beat Putnam 28-6 this past week and debuted the Wildcat offense. The Blue Devils have a tough opponent this week as they travel to Westfield to conclude their four-game road trip. Uh, my name is Ezra Norris, and I'm in 12th grade. Maggie Miller, grade 12. What prompted us to make new murals was the need to have more color in the school. The last murals that we had were kind of old from the 90s, early 2000s, so we just needed some new, fresh things to look at. We were assigned math and science. Our idea was to make the math section more like geometric, and then the science was more like flowy. Uh, more movement in it, and then it's all kind of collided together to make one piece. So I was assigned the computer lab, so I wanted to make something that like sort of looked like a, a computer wallpaper, and then I chose like a font which is like an old school computer font. Like, I've grown up in a family where like art is like m both my parents are artists, and I've always been surrounded by art. Uh, but like more recently, I've really enjoyed graphic design because you're designing for like an audience. Like you're making art for a consumer, not just for yourself. Life without art sounds horrible. Uh, bland. I think you're like pretty boring. There's no way to express your feelings. There's no way to share your thoughts with anyone in any other way besides like words. Hi, 
my name is Nell Sanders, and this is Tell It Like It Is, where all things controversial are covered. On November 8th, Northampton residents and all Massachusetts citizens will be voting on four different ballot questions. Ballot question number two specifically has been sparking debate. This question would approve up to 12 new charter schools or expansion of enrollment in existing charter schools per year. We have a few charter schools in our local area, which include the Hilltown Schools, Pioneer Valley Performing Arts Charter School, and the Pioneer Valley Chinese Immersion Charter School. Northampton Public Schools lose about two million to charter schools every single year. With the introduction of 12 new schools every year, that number would greatly increase. However, some say charter schools serve an important role in communities and offer alternative education to students. In our state, question two is definitely a political argument. I interviewed Northamptoners, teachers and students on charter schools and whether or not they will vote yes or no. Could you state your name and who you are? Sure, I'm Jennifer Hartley. I live in Florence. Hi, I'm Heather Brown. I teach English in the English department here at Northampton. Melissa Michaels, former English teacher. Lyndon Wissinis, and I'm a senior. So I'm interviewing um, Northampton residents on the second question on the Massachusetts ballot, um, and it's about charter schools. So what's your opinion on charter schools? Like, would you vote yes or no? I am undecided. I've been working hard since last May to encourage people to vote no on question two. You know, I haven't made up my mind yet. Well, I think it's a lot more complicated than a yes or no answer. Uh, in this area, charter schools serve about 200 students, mm -hmm. and in the past year they have um, cost our district over $2 million. I'm really trying to hear the arguments, pro and con, and I, I think I really see both sides. I feel that charter schools are very important. They're an important option for many parents and many families. I went to charter schools for three years, and I've been at the Northampton High. This is my second year. Um, and I had a wonderful experience at my charter school. I went to PVPA. I think there's a lot of improvement that needs to happen in schools, and in that sense, you know, I'm kind of support charter schools. I'm sorry that they take so much money away from public schools, um, which to me is the only drawback. I think that they should renegotiate how, um, how charter schools are funded. I just have been encouraging people to think about if we had that $2 million in the district of Northampton, what we could do with that money. Um, we could service a, an entire um, another elementary school. I really see a lot of the, the major funding issues that are going on, so I think it's a really tricky, tricky thing. I think they are worth it. I'm sorry that they do take that money away, but I do, I do think they're worth it um, because I think they provide a really valuable service for uh, a large population of, of students. And without that option, where do parents and students go? All right, thank you. As you can see, a lot of people are still undecided on question two. So what do you think? Would you vote yes or no? Again, I'm Nell Sanders, and this was Tell It Like It Is. The future of gaming has finally come to Northampton High School. NCTV now has a virtual reality gaming system, and this week we brought Miss Oshiak and Mr. Harp down to try it out. <laughs> what, if I, what if I find out that I've actually been trained by like the CIA or something, and I don't even know it? I'm a, I'm a sleeper cell zombie killer. All right, so I just shoot at the start. Oh God. I've always seen people talk about the virtual reality and it seemed really interesting for me, but I don't really have any experience with the, with the headsets or anything else. I don't, I don't play a lot of video games in the first place. Uh, I think I actually, it was pretty terrifying, but I think I expected it to be more terrifying. I think if I had sound, I would have nightmares tonight. I might still have nightmares tonight. I, lost, I certainly lost sense of the room that I'm in. I lost a little bit of sense of time and where I was. Uh, it, it was kind of mesmerizing. The second game I played was, was you know, I, I spent a little bit of time as it was setting up, just looking around and a, you know, taking a look at the whole world in there. And, and you know, that was interesting. I'd have this in my basement and I'd be a terrible mom because I would have my husband do all the parenting playing this. You know, having the opportunity to shoot zombies or little little alien spacecraft or whatever, that's that's uh, that's pretty fun. But I'm sure there's there's a lot of things that I could do that would 
be able to be welcomed by my bosses. Am I still alive? <laughs> if you would like to try virtual reality for yourself, check out the NCTV website at NorthamptonTV.org. In other news, Homecoming is next Saturday. Tickets will be sold at the office before and after school for $12 each or two for 20. This has been the transcript. Make sure to check out nhstechnology.org for more.